Although the accuracy of Ovo was proven under combat conditions, there was one severe shortcoming to the system. The operators could work with only one aircraft at a time. Only two types of American heavy bombers were used in England during World War II. These were the Consolidated B-24 and the Boeing B-17. Following D-Day, General Jimmy Doolittle had a fleet of almost 2,000 of these heavy bombers under his command. It was the largest fleet of bombers normally flying in formation the world will ever see. As an example, take a look at this photo. It shows a B-17 from the 91st Bomb Group in the foreground. However, in the background, almost out of sight, under the nose of the aircraft, there are additional bombers. By enlarging that area, we can see an entire combat wing of 54 bombers, mere dots in the distance. Another group of 36 planes is visible under the ball turret for a total of almost 100 heavy bombers in this photo. The expanding numbers of large formations of bombers carrying out missions all over Germany were responsible for the conversion of Oboe to the GH system of blind bombing. In the DVD covering Oboe, we showed cat and mouse operators worked from land bases in England. They transmitted pulse radio signals to an aircraft flying over Germany and the signal was relayed back to them by a transponder on the aircraft. For the sake of simplicity, we used an approximate speed for the radio waves of 1,000 feet per microsecond or millionths of a second. Actually, the Bureau of Standards rate of speed for radio waves is 983.571 feet per microsecond. By measuring the time lapse between sending and receiving the signal and allowing a constant delay for retransmission through the transponder, the distance to the aircraft was measured with great accuracy. The basic problem with OBO was not accuracy. Indeed, it was the most precise of all blind bombing systems developed during World War II. The basic shortcoming of OBO was that operators could work with only one aircraft at a time and this was in an era of 1,000 plane bomber raids. The Telecommunications Research Establishment, commonly called TRE, was the company assigned the problem of redesigning OBO to handle this huge fleet of bombers. I have no idea who originated the scheme of merging the principles of G and OBO, but it was a stroke of genius. I strongly suspect that Robert J. Dippy, the creator of G, who was then employed by TRE, played a very important part. The end result was a system known as GH. Of course, we are familiar with Dippy's so-called G for grid navigation system. The H is an RAF designation for a bombing system as in the H2S and H2X airborne radar systems used for bombing through the clouds. Basically GH is the same as OBOL. The one big difference is the operators and the transponders switch seats. The navigator of the aircraft becomes the operator and measures his distance from the cat and mouse transponders by measuring the signals received on the upper and lower timelines of his G-Box. Obviously, 
the navigator who assumes the duties of the cat and mouse operators as well as carrying out his duties as navigator of the aircraft is a very busy individual. Most of the work associated with a GH bombing raid was carried out before the mission occurred. The navigator carried a flimsy with the following information pertinent to the individual target. First, the target. Second, the tracking beacon or cat. Third, the releasing beacon or mouse. Fourth, the six minute point. Fifth, the assumed estimated wind, for example, 20 degrees at 38 miles per hour. Sixth, the estimated ground speed such as 187 miles per hour for an indicated airspeed of 180 miles per hour. Seventh, the approximate heading at the track starting point of 167 degrees true. Eighth, the approximate heading at the bombing point or 193 degrees true. His first duty is to navigate the aircraft to the vicinity of the track line using his G-Box in its conventional hyperbolic curve navigation mode. When he reaches the area of the track, he throws a switch and changes the unit to the GH mode. In this mode, the unit transmits radio pulses to the cat and mouse transponders. The navigator sets the marker blips on his cathode ray tube to predetermined values for the track on the upper timeline trace and to the value for the bomb release point on the lower trace. As he follows the progress of the aircraft along the track towards the bomb release point, he notes the drift correction required to maintain his true course on the track. Let us assume he is flying east and has been assigned a true course of 90 degrees at the bomb release point. However, he has a wind from the north that requires a drift correction of 6 degrees left to maintain a true course of 90 degrees. Therefore, all planes in the formation must be flying a magnetic heading of 84 degrees at the moment of bomb release to maintain a true course of 90 degrees. The reason for this is that a small error in heading when bombs are released means a large error in the bomb strike point. As near as can be determined from available literature, the basic modifications carried out by TRE included the addition of the following pieces of electronic equipment. First, a modified G-Box consisting of a cathode ray tube, oscilloscope, and radio receiver to pick up pulses from the master and slave stations of two grid systems of hyperbolic curves. This unit is called the indicator. Second, a transmitter to send radio pulse signals to the cat and mouse transponders. Third, a modulator. Fourth, a computer control unit. And fifth, a computer drive unit. GH became operational in the 8th Air Force during the fall of 1944 when a Pathfinder force was established at the 303rd Bomb Group of the 1st Bombardment Division at Molesworth. Pathfinder teams were sent from this group to lead other groups and wings in the 1st Division for all GH bombing raids. New teams were being trained on a continuing basis. By the end of April 1945, each group was scheduled to have its own GH lead team and aircraft as well. 
However, the end of the war precluded this. My search for information concerning GH navigation led me to England where I contacted Douglas Fisher, who was a photographer for TRE during World War II. Mr. Fisher retrieved a slightly damaged copy of an RAF training film on GH from his files and graciously donated the copy to me. I feel it is an important historical document and have therefore included the film in this report. Even in its slightly damaged condition, it contains valuable information for historians interested in the technology associated with oboe and GH blind bombing techniques.